Good afternoon. So I begin the next talk with my apologizes for a little bit of chaos in, in the last talk. No, no, there was not chaos, however, things are complicated because I wanted to give you too much, maybe too much information about geometry. However, these mathematical tools which I mentioned are usually neglected by physicists and they are not so important when we work on a flat space, but my goal is to give you also the introduction to electrodynamics on a curved background and then, of course, working with those uh, simple mathematical tools as used in standard textbooks is really awful. The formulae are extremely complicated, so I want to keep already on high level <laughs> and this is why, for example, I always keep one uh, index up, one index down and so on and so on and so on and especially what was especially important I have introduced those tensors separately contravariant tensors, separately covariant. Of course you understand there, that there might be mixed some indices up, some indices down and so on. Every index which is down is somehow married with dx this index. Every index up is married with d over dx and this way everything uh, we are really sure that no error will enter into <coughs> every formula which is legal from this point of view is correct. Okay, and among all covariant uh, tensors, there were very important those which are entirely skew-symmetric. Skew-symmetric or anti-symmetric, you know, yeah? So, let me call it omega, it's just omega i1 some i n d x i n d x i no, sorry, i1, i n, and now, now, in normal uh, tensors, I put this tensor product sign between them, which simply means that, what is that? This is black box with an, one entry. Everything, so what does, it, what does it mean? This means that this is a black box with n entries. I just put those black boxes with one entry, one aside of the other, and this way I get, I obtain a black box with n entries. And whenever I have a collection, because such a tensor is understood as a multilinear uh, mapping on vectors. So whenever I have here some n couple of vectors, this means that how does it work, this black box? The first vector is put to the first mouth, the second to the second, and so on and so on. And of course, this is bilinear, therefore it is a tensor, yeah? But, uh, there, uh, for us, very important tensors are those which are totally anti-symmetric. Anti-symmetric, this means that I put them into those mouths 
in all possible permutations. However, when the permutation is even, I put sign plus. When it is odd, I put the sum minus. This way I get something which is totally anti-symmetric. Yeah? And so this is not that. This is not just putting those black boxes with uh, one entry, one aside the other, but the whole combination of them, anti-symmetric combination. And this anti-symmetric combination is, by mathematician, uh, written this way. This simply means that I uh, take all possible uh, uh, not combination, uh, permutations, not all possible permutations, and I put them here, and I uh, put plus sign when the permutation is uh, even, minus when it is odd, and then I sum this way, yeah? So this is an anti-symmetric object. And we, um, in electrodi electrodynamics, may be understood from the mathematical point of view as a, th as a theory of totally anti-symmetric tensors. And those total um, um, uh, covariant, covariant totally anti-symmetric tensor which is uh, which is called by mathematicians a differential form a differential form so differential form in such an animal understood as a multi uh, multi linear mapping on n couples of vectors which, moreover, is totally anti-symmetric, which means that if I change the order, I, ob I obtain the uh, change of the sign of the result. Yeah? So this is the differential form. N differential form, because those, there might be zero differential form, which means a scal scalar. Zero differential form is simply a function. Now, one differential form, which is simply a covariant, yeah, only one. It is simply a covector field. But already two differential form with two indices, it is um, a electromagnetic tensor. This was a great discovery that all those formulae which are which look so terribly in first papers oh even in Maxwell if you take I have written for you Maxwell equations. It took me uh, just four lines in uh, original Maxwell paper, it is many, many pages because he just used different letters for different uh, components of those fields. So, uh, X component of the electric field was one letter, say A. Y component of X field, another, and so on, and so on. So, because we have four fields, namely E, D, H, B, then he was obliged to use uh, 12 different letters, and uh, he used just a differentiation. It was uh, crazy, a little bit crazy, physicist uh, from, from Dublin, uh, namely Heaviside, Gerald Heaviside, who has invented those uh, symbols, divergence, 
curl or rotation and so on and he already was able to shorten those many pages of uh, Maxwell's paper to those four lines which I was writing for you. But nowadays I will show you that we are able to still to make only two lines and not out of those four lines. And this is, of course, you may say that the ah, difference between four lines and two lines is, is not so big. So maybe this effort is not useful. It is useful because if you start to work in curvilinear coordinates, which is necessary in general relativity, because in general relativity, when the space-time is non-flat, there are no uh, rectilinear coordinates, yeah? So we must use co uh, So if we want to be able to work in curvilinear co coordinates and to get formulae which are somehow reasonable, then it, it is worthwhile. So I am doing now a big effort to tell you how the electrodynamics looks in, in this advanced notation. And of course you may say, ah, when I take a standard textbook electrodynamics like Jackson and so on, it is much simpler. No, it is not simpler, but if you then try to translate everything to curvilinear coordinates, then I beg your pardon. No, no, <laughs> this notation is absolutely awful. Okay, so let us continue. So as I told you, the great discovery of Einstein was that electric, electric uh, and magnetic field are just components of something bigger, of some four-dimensional object, namely the object which I will call F, and it is written like that, minus, I will, this is just a convention. There are also different conventions. In what I am try, doing here, I try to follow the um, standard con convention, for instance, which you may find in this big book, Gravitation, by Wheeler, Misner, Thorn. Of course, there are newer books, but I don't like them at least some of them. <laughs> Among all books in general relativity which I know, I believe uh, Wheeler, Misner, Thorne is probably the best one. Even if I don't like many of, of the approaches, but it is reasonable. So I follow the, this convention. Well, okay. I will write it this way. What does it mean? E, we already know what is E, electric, electric field. Yeah? So it is one form. So this is equal to A K D X K. Yeah? This is an electric field. Or if you wish, we may say X if instead of xk, x1, x2, x3, I will write down x, y, z, then it is x component of electric field times dx plus y component of electric field times dy plus z component of the field times z. Yeah? Okay, so it is, so you see that electric field appears as uh, those components which correspond to time space, one time, one space. It is a two form, so 
every term contains two uh, derivatives of two uh, mm, coordinates. Then we divide them into groups. The group which does contain one time, it cannot contain t twice time because it is anti-symmetric. Therefore, something like that is simply zero. Yeah? It is simply zero because it dt repeats and it is anti-symmetric, therefore it is zero. Therefore, there is, uh, dt cannot appear twice. Okay, so dt may be accompanied with any of the three space coordinates. So this is one group. And the other group where only uh, space coordinates ap ap appear, right? So this b is nothing like I will write like that. B okay, BK epsilon K I J D X I D X K. Yeah, because it is anti-symmetric, therefore two um, derivatives which are the same cannot appear because it is zero. Therefore, after all, we may write it the following way. If I put one here, here is one, then only two and three may appear, therefore it is B x d y d z plus b y d z d x plus b z d x d y you observe that I try to use this cyclic uh, because I could as well write down here b minus dx dz because it is anti-symmetric. Yeah? But I try to, to uh, write it in, uh, in the cyclic order and this way I will not make an error because I remember. However, remember x, y, z, x, y, z, y, z, x, z, x, y. Oh, sorry, 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 so I ah, no, x, here is, what is bad? Uh, I, j, j, yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Okay, I, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. K, I, J, I, J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, why do I use just standard letters for E and those uh, how you call such letters? Uh, what? Calligraphic. Uh, calligraphic. Why do I use calligraphic letters? This is only for, <laughs> for me because I could as well use just B. However, when I want to go uh, further to general relativity, the distinction between capital and calligraphic will be important. And the difference is, uh, I will slowly come to that, that this is a vector, whereas this is a vector density. 
which means that this is that times square root of the determinant of the metric. But I, I will come to that. This is the uh, related, maybe I will already discuss it today, that epsilon is not properly a tensor. If I use change of co uh, Cartesian coordinates, everybody has something? Yeah. If I uh, use only Cartesian coordinates, then the Jacobian of the change is 1 or minus 1, and which simply means that square root of the, met, uh, of the metric doesn't enter, and so on, and so on, then I may identify them. But if I want to include fully nonlinear change of coordinates, then I must keep this distinction because otherwise the, uh, the formula will not be true. Okay, so today, at the moment, I will perform either uh, rotations or Lorentz uh, transformations, then I may perfectly use just B, but just for my conscious, I prefer to, <laughs> to use BK, which is equal B, because in in Cartesian or Lorentzian coordinates, square root of the determinant of the metric is equal 1. Therefore, this is equal that times the square root of determinant of G, which is 1. Therefore, for a while, this is the same. But in general case, this is not the same. <coughs> okay. But I'm so much <laughs> used to, to do calculations in general relativistic framework that it is almost impossible for me to write just B here because I know <laughs> that it is not a correct formula. Okay. So now <coughs> I want to perform today two, two important calculations. One of them, rewrite Maxwell equations in terms of this object, and you will see that it is very easy, and I have a tendency to postpone it, and to begin with the other one, Namely, how those, those field, fields transform when we, uh, during the Lorentz transformation. Okay? So let us begin with, with the other thing. Okay. So I remind you, we have already discussed Lorentz transformations. I, ha I have prepared for, for me a page in order not to to, to do an uh, error uh, of sign. Otherwise, everything is simple, but sometimes... Okay, so what is Lorentz transformation? I remind you that it is cosine, uh, uh, hyperbolic cosine of a parameter lambda times t plus x time uh, hyperbolic sine of lambda yeah and x so it is a kind of a hyperbolic rotation yeah a rotation in a hyperbolic geometry equal uh, x times hyperbolic sine of lambda plus no, excuse me. 
t times hyperbolic. Or the same plus x times hyperbolic cosine of lambda. Uh, this was a uh, Lorentz transformation in two dimensions. Yeah. Now in f f four dimensions, it means uh, uh, that we perform this two-dimensional uh, Lorentz transformation, and the remaining coordinates remain the same. Yeah. So why? new y is equal to the old y and new z is equal to the old z, yeah? So this is... And, and it is very easy to prove, and probably you even know the proof, that every Lorentz transformation is of that type, but you have to choose properly the axis, yeah? So the x in which we are going is called, uh, sorry, the axis in which we are, the new um, observer is moving is called x axis. Yeah, and what is the trajectory of the new observer this uh, I repeat uh, things which we already had done no, this is x tilde equal zero yeah but th because the old observer was put at place x equals zero and now the new observer x tilde what does it mean it means that x is equal minus hyperbolic sine of lambda hyperbolic cosine of lambda times t right so from our point of view from the point of view of the old observer, the new observer travels with a uniform velocity, which we call u. Yeah? And of course, this is v divided by c. You understand, yeah? Because this, is, this u, I use uh, physical units where time and x are measured in the same uh, units, yeah? Which means that the velocity of light is x definizione equal one, one. Which means that velocity is always a dimensionless quantity, namely a percentage of the velocity of light, yeah? Of course, it is not very useful for practical reasons because the highest possible velocities which we dispose, namely a jet, for instance, the jet travels um, 1000 kilometers per hour and velocity of light is 300,000 kilometers per second, so it, the percentage is very, very small. How, so it is not a useful way to measure velocities, but for our uh, theoretical uh, purposes, it is perfectly good, because the formulae are, uh, are simple. Okay. So this remark, I will. It is just you, okay. Uh, so u is equal. Let me call sine hyperbolic sine capital S and hyperbolic cosine S minus 
and if we want to find those things in terms of this physical quantity because what we know what is u it is just a velocity of the new uh, observer whereas this sine and cosines appear here as some mathematical objects and we do not know what do they so you remember how do we proceed you remember the uh, Pythagoras law in uh, hyperbolic geometry cosine square minus sine square equal one right in normal trigonometry we have plus and here we have minus which simply means that uh, that if we take square square minus disappears then s square is c square minus one divided by uh, c square and we have just a single equation for for c <coughs> or for c square we know that c, c is positive therefore if we know c we already know c square because the hyperbolic cosine is always positive so it is very easy yeah c square times u square equal c square minus one so we have c square uh, one minus u square equal one so finally c is nothing but one over uh, no, c square one over one minus u square and finally we immediately obtain what is this hyperbolic cosine and no doubt that we have plus a square root because hyperbolic sine is positive and now uh, if I want to uh, to know what is uh, u so uh, what, no no what is sine so s is minus u times c right which simply means that s is equal minus u divided by square root of 1 minus u square okay so this is just repetition of what we have already done a couple of weeks ago but you see all this is simple now if you want to get standard uh, formulae from textbooks then instead of t you put c times t yeah because it is just the same t but calculated in different yeah and then instead of u you put v divided by c and and this way you get standard formulae which were so difficult for me to remember when i was a student i really hated them but because this is the nice formula which i remember and i will never make any any error here okay so this is a good preparation <coughs> now s equal minus u times c okay so this formula i will keep for a while and now let me ah by the way by the way still one one thing namely 
for our purposes, this form, uh, no, uh, we need not this formula, but the inverse formula, because what we are doing, we are, uh, we shall express the same object, because electromagnetic field is just this object, the left-hand side, which here is expressed in terms of old coordinates, and we want to express it in terms of new coordinates, yeah? Which is very simple, we just, we will just replace old coordinates by the new, and this way we will find the, uh, the law. Okay, so we must have the uh, inverse formula the inverse formula, and the inverse formula I have already uh, told you that inverse means that uh, lambda is replaced but by lambda minus one, because um, if this transformation is called u of lambda, so there is a composition law uh, eta is equal u of lambda plus eta. Therefore, the inverse matrix we obtain where lambda is equal to no, Of course, just the inverse the c is the same, but but the hyperbolic cosine will be inverse because the, if the new uh, observer moves with velocity u with respect to me, then I am moving with respect to him with velocity minus u, yeah? Changing u to minus u doesn't change anything here, but it does change here, just simply changes sign, yeah? Which means that immediately I may write down the inverse formula, but I must change sign whenever, yeah, oh, here I must, so this is, of course, what I have done here miraculously, you may just obtained by solving this equation. This was, yeah, this was an inverse formula. You may say, ah, it was a two equations for t and x, and I will solve it. And if you solve, you obtain the same formula with, with, yeah. But of course it is much nicer just to observe that nothing else may happen. Only lambda goes to minus lambda and because hyperbolic cosine is a, an even function therefore it doesn't change anything, whereas sine is an odd function therefore if lambda changes to minus lambda this minus goes here. Okay, so this is, this is simple. So I believe that we are now prepared to, are we? Okay, so I will slowly, slowly try. So what I'm doing now, I will rewrite this formula, this formula when I have plugged that and for B I have plugged that, I will rewrite in terms of new coordinates. Yeah? Okay. So I, I do it. So the same F is minus D. I must put, uh, I must use DT. Of course this C and uh, S are like that, yeah, so it is, sorry, cosine which I have 
denoted just for purposes of, of the calculation by C. And I keep this because I heard C D T dot minus S D X dot. Okay. Now exterior uh, product and now I plug here what I have here, yeah? So it is, I open, yeah? And now there is E X times DX. I express old X upstairs in terms of the new time and new X. Yeah? So I simply follow what is written here. So I open it. DX is minus hyperbolic sign which I write as D T new T plus hyperbolic cosine times d x nu right so i have rewritten this term correct this ones do not change because alt y is equal to uh, to new one and so on therefore i simply write e y d y it was old but i perfectly may put tilde over that because the new one is equal to and the same for this plus e z d z which oh okay so i have already rewritten the first term of this f in terms of new coordinates and now slowly slowly i will rewrite this magnetic part which also has uh, three um, terms the first term again is very easy because y and z doesn't change yeah so I plus the z component of the magnetic field times dy dz and I put tildes over them because they do not change during this Lorentz transformation and now the second term z does not change but x does Therefore, let us write plus B Y D Z does not change and now again I must put D X expressed in terms of the new coordinates which is written here we have already used it once so it is minus hyperbolic sign which is s d nu t plus hyperbolic cosine times d nu x okay and now there is only a similar a similar uh, term which we rewrite so plus the z co component of the field and now dx so the same thing yeah uh, 
precisely what we have done here. Yeah, so uh, dz uh, dx because uh, yeah, dx I have already written here so minus s d t tilde plus c d x tilde and dy d y when I may put tilde without any trouble. So it is already almost, yeah, let me now, and now we want to list those two groups, namely one group which contains new T. Of course, so uh, when we take the exterior, exterior, mathematicians say exterior product, which means anti-symmetric product of these things, then of course dt, dt vanishes, dx, dx vanishes, and what remains? There are only the, these two terms, yeah? Okay. So, let me rewrite it. I believe that this will be remember. So it is equal. Minus c square times uh, then the ex. Ah, first of all, okay. So now I am multiplying this by that. Okay. So first of all, it is useful to put a, a, a ex before everything, and now. As I told you, this time that is zero because dt dt is zero because exterior product means anti-symmetric. Yeah. Okay. Now this time that is minus c square, and now there will be dt tilde times d x tilde yeah, and dx dt so minus s times minus s is s square but there is still minus here so it uh, wait, yeah so a priori, minus is, I mean, there will be minus here, but there will be dx dt, but dx dt is minus dt dx, you see, because it is dx tilde dt is minus dt dx because it is skew symmetric, right? Therefore, I will get not dt dx, but dx dt. Therefore, I have one, two, three minuses, and one, and again one, because I exchange sign. So finally, I get s square, right? And, ladies and gentlemen, what is that? It is minus one, right? Oof. So we see, and of course, this is nothing but the, uh, the value of the x component of, of the new uh, electric field. So we see that the x 
component of electric field does not does not change ah. but the remaining component they do change and we are just okay so we have already calculated this term time this term now this term no so first of all let me list all the um, terms which contain ta uh, time because there will be also the magnetic you see that dx dy is something which is magnetic yeah so we will calculate it at the end so now let us only multiply this term times this one so plus no minus there is always c and now dt times what we have here e y b y plus e z d z okay but we have also terms containing dt here right let me just okay i will erase this part because i remember it very well okay so i want to collect all the terms which collect, uh, which contain dt the new dt because this will be the new electric so take this one times that so there will be minus c b z dt dy right and moreover still this this object but now we have dz dt with so i will use this minus to to change it right so I will write plus S B Y this minus goes for the change so there will be D T D Z okay so you see this part will be added to that one this part will be added to that that one and we have already listed all the terms which contain time which means that this is the new x component of the electric field this plus that is the new comp y component of the electric field so you see that magnetic and, and electric uh, intertwine yeah they are not separate and this and that describes the z component of the new electric field but we'll do it later so what remains we have to list 
the, all the terms which do not contain time. Yeah? So this already has been done. So for instance, when dx multiplies dy and dz, so this is we, we must take it into account, yeah? So minus plus minus it is s, so uh, s, s, e, y, d, x tilde, d, y tilde. Yeah, you see, I have listed that multiplied by my that, okay? And the same goes here, again, plus s, e, z, d, x, d, z. So this part has already been exhausted. Everything is taken into account. And now, from that part, This first term, which doesn't change, with is b z. No, it is not z. Excuse me, it is x b x x y z x y z. Even always the uh, yeah x, y, z, x, x, y, z, <coughs> x, d, d, z, and now this term, because this has already been taken to, into account, and this one. So this term, by, I will put it here, there is C, B, Y, DZ, DX. And the last one is this one. dx dy. So C B Z. So I will write plus plus C B Z D x tilde d y tilde okay now everything is there so you see this does not change but this will be added to z this will be added to z and so on and so on so let us finally collect all these terms. <coughs> I will keep this formula because they, they are useful. So the first term is 
e x minus e x d t d x tilde. Okay. Now instead of S I will always write U C minus U C. Okay? So this goes together with that. Instead of S I will write minus U D C, therefore there will be minus C goes outside and now d t times y t y instead of s i put minus u so minus it, so there will be minus u B Z D Y. Okay. And the same in the same way I will add this and that. This and that because they contain dt dz, dt dz. Again, instead of s I put c minus c u, therefore again c minus c will go outside and here I will obtain e z minus u b y okay dz and that's all as far as the uh, uh, electric field is concerned and now we have to collect the magnetic part which means the terms the three terms which do not contain uh, time the first one is very simple as we have seen namely it does not change so plus b x d y d z it is already there and what remains is here so we are going to add th uh, this yes. no let me begin with that because it, this is a component by okay so plus I put C outside of the outside of that so there will be B Y and instead of S I put minus U C so it is minus but the order here is different that uh, yeah therefore I will change the order which means that instead of minus u I will get plus u e z and dz d x and now these two which is 
plus again c goes outside c now i first take bz dx dy and instead of s i and here i don't i i'm not a, a forced to change the order because because here I have changed the order. This is why this minus u became plus u. But here the order is the same. Yes? So s is minus u c. c goes outside, so minus u e y. And this is the this is the end of our story. And you remember that this part was an electric field and this is a new magnetic field. Yeah, so this is the new, so it can be called E tilde X. This is times C is called new E Y, and this is new, and so on and so on. Yeah, so we may try to write down the following formula. So new x component of the field is equal to the old x component of the electric field. Yeah? Now, new y component, the new y component of the field, of the electric field, is what stands here times c is equal c and you remember what is c c is just one over this famous relativistic square root one minus v over c square in conventional terminology yeah okay but let me just write down c times what stands here? The old EY minus U B Z. And finally, the new Z component of the electric field is C times the old one. Something is wrong. Ah. There is plus sign, therefore. Ah. <sighs> there must be plus sign. Okay, it is U B Y, but I'm just wondering, oh, uh, wait a moment, wait a moment.
curious plus. I don't know why. Something happened which I This term is dz dt by minus z by by minus z dt plus here is plus s No, this is not, no, 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 this is something else. Dy dz dx, dz dx, dz dx. Because here I, I do not change sign. Here I do not change sign. And here I had to change sign. Why can't you put in the minus sign? Yeah. In front of C, you have minus sign. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you put in the minus sign there? Pardon me? You have minus sign in front of C. Here? Where? Show me. Excuse me. Here you have minus sign. Ah. But why don't you bring the minus sign here? When then you can. Oh no, but it must be minus C E Y. No, no, this is correct. And why? Um. But this whole thing combined with this. Ah, with that, yeah? No, but the... Uh, the I have... Uh, I have done the same calculation for me just half an hour before the talk and I what I have what I got is minus and plus here Excuse me, I will continue. Do you see? So, yeah, something. I'm sure this is correct. This is right minus c. Then when you change this, it's minus. So minus times minus. Ah, and it. It gives plus, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, excuse me. I knew that, that I might. Yeah. In any case, this I have checked <laughs> carefully. And okay. Now uh, the magnetic part. Magnetic part. So again, the X component of the magnetic field again doesn't change because this is just the yeah so the new bx is equal new to the old one <laughs> and this is the new y component of of the magnetic field, yeah, but because y, z, x, always cyclic, yeah? Therefore, now I may, yeah? So, the new comp y component of the electric field is, is C, and here 
the old one plus u e z and finally this is the new z component of the electric field yeah so again b z new is equal c b z old minus u e z okay so we are happy that the calculus was done but at the first glance it, it looks a bit ugly yeah because there is plus here minus uh, minus here plus here is there any <laughs> nice rule in that yes and now we are going to translate everything into the language which is yeah because <coughs> For any uh, Lorentz transformation, which means that if we choose a new, a new observer which moves with velocity u, and u is important, in some directions, then our calculations were adapted in such a way that the x-axis is uh, parallel to the motion of this new observer. Therefore, x-axis, it doesn't matter that this is an x-axis. It only, what is u, is para, uh, what is x, is parallel to the motion of observer. Whereas, what is y and z is perpendicular. Yeah? So, in order to get some or, some reasonable order in this formula, Lee, we should abandon this x, y, z and you, we should divide both fields into components which are parallel to the, to the obser new observer's velocity and those which are perpendicular. And this way, finally, because um. U times E X is the velocity, yeah, is the velocity of the new observer. Velocity of the new observer. So look what happens. C is C. But what is what is that? Mm, uh, why? This is nothing. This is a perpendicular I mean transversal component of that. And this is a vector product of b with velocity, because this is the x, right? Yeah, so this is nothing but the u times vector product is b and the component number what? If you take a vector which is directed in the di direction x, so the y component, y, is bz times, yeah, so this is minus u and the uh, perpendicular yeah? whereas this is also 
or maybe z component and this is also uh, u times b no so ye, excuse me this is y this is z and no wonder that here we have minus and here we have plus yeah because if we multiply by vector u then the vector product changes the uh, uh, rotates the perpendicular uh, vectors yeah so y becomes z z becomes minus y yeah because the vector product with u with the velocity of, of the observer rotates the perpendicular uh, vectors yeah so if something is was z now it be becomes u if something was u it now becomes minus z right so it is the fact that here is minus here plus and also here is plus here minus means that these additional terms come from the rotation of the perpendicular vector electric here and magnetic here with respect to the uh, velocity vector of the new observer and in this way everything becomes goes smoothly yeah because uh, sorry 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 of course I have also make an error if minus then also minus here here <laughs> because when we rotate x axis becomes y uh, no x is here uh, y axis becomes z z axis becomes minus y yeah now i would I, I must slowly go to the end of this uh, of this today's lecture because I don't want to cheat you anymore. <coughs> there was already one hour and a half, so please try to to think a little bit. So at the first glance there is a, a disorder here because in some formulae we, we have minus and in the other formula we have plus but the, there is an order not disorder because everything comes from the fact that we take the vector product of the perpendicular or of the entire because the uh, uh, longitudinal when multiplied uh, vector uh, when vector product is taken vanishes yeah because two vectors which are parallel when we take the vector product gives zero so in fact I could have written here only the perpendicular part but it doesn't matter because the perpendicular the longitudinal part the part which is parallel to you vanishes from the vector product yeah and now when we rotate everything this is a rotation of b around x axis 
The rotation means that x goes to z and z goes to minus x. Sorry, say excuse me, not x, <laughs> not x. Why? Because x stands here and we rotate in yz uh, plane, yeah? So, <sighs> excuse me, but... <laughs> so, again, x is the uh, axis of, of uh, our observer. The motion of our observer goes in the direction of x-axis, right? Now, the vector product with u is just rotation in yz plane. Namely, y z goes to z, z goes to minus y z goes to minus y. Okay, this means that it is plus and also this plus is here. Okay, okay, so finally, I am finishing here. Let us rewrite this formula in a way which is nice and useful for further considerations. Um, Pz tilde, shouldn't this be like Ey? What? What, what, what? Isn't Pz uh, tilde, the final formula? Yes. It needs to translate it. You, like, parenthesis and Ey. C bracket, Pz, minus. Oh, sorry, sorry, of course it is not. B, Z, Y. This is Y. Right? Why? Inside bracket. C and bracket. Okay? Yes. Y, Z, Z, Y, and the sign is different. Yeah, okay, okay, excuse me. Now everything is okay. So we rewrite them, and it is, there will be only four formulae because, yeah, therefore, X, uh, E, X is E, say, parallel. Parallel to the velocity of our new observer doesn't change. So the parallel parts uh, do not change during this. And the same is valid for, for B. Parallel component of B doesn't change. And now, I do not need to divide everything e e into y and z, because the formulae are the same. So, I will write the following. E transversal, transversal part. And it contains both y and z component in our previous setting. Yeah? So now, the new is equal, uh, for instance here, C times the old one plus U vector product with B. Uh, yeah, yeah. And here I could as well write parallel, uh, perpendicular, but it doesn't matter because parallel part vanishes were multiplied vectorially with u. Yeah? Okay, so the simplest way is 
like that. And finally, for the uh, magnetic field, the perpendicular part, the new one, uh, for instance, let me take this. So this is C, and here B, the old perpendicular part, and now it will be minus U times E. And that's all. So this is the very end of the story, we conclude that the, par uh, that the part of both electric and magnetic field which is parallel to the motion of the new observer do not, ch uh, do not change during the uh, Lorentz transformations, whereas the parts which are transversal, they change. First of all, they are multiplied by this famous 1 over square root of, of min 1 minus v square by c square, but moreover, there is a little bit of uh, the other field which mixes. For instance, there is an um, additional part which comes from magnetic field to the new electric and additional part of B from E. And you see this plus and minus here, which means that this uh, additional part is again something like uh, the rotation around the axis in which our new observer moves. Yeah? I believe that I will stop here because of, so I have fulfilled a part of my <laughs> of my project and the second part will continue within one week, so I will show you that, oh, so just for, as a, as a advertisement, I will show you that instead of four uh, Maxwell equations, they will be in this four-dimensional language, there will be only two of them. One of them, there will be df equals zero. And this contains four Maxwell equations, those which have zero on the right hand side. And the other is that there is something which is some operation which I, I will tell you. And d of that is equal electric current which is a four current which contains zero component which is just a density of a charge and the current so these are Maxwell equations moreover this they are already valid on any background without uh, whether it is flat or non-flat whether we use even in flat case we may use curvilinear coordinates and this equation. Okay, but this was only an, an advertisement. So, thank you very much. I will discuss it later. Just a question. Has anybody of you, had anybody of you a course in similar things or no? Yes? And you, uh, are acquainted with differential form a little bit? Uh, yes, 
A little. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Because on one hand, I wouldn't like this talk, this lecture, to be too easy for you, because I would like, in any case, to teach you something. But I wouldn't like to be too complicated. So I try to find some center. Thank you very much. <laughs>